What's up guys? Chris here with 806 Vapes again. Today we're going to break down News Channel 7's interview of me and a local man that got healed from a uh, THC cartridge. News Channel 7, you should be ashamed of yourself. We told you we were going to do it. An Amarillo man is in the hospital tonight, thankful to be alive after what he says was a near-death experience caused by vaping. ABC 7's Lamaya Harvell spoke with him today. She joins us live in studio now with his... Not really his story, but her version of his story. ...story and a counterpoint from a local vape shop owner. Lamaya? The epidemic of vape-related illnesses has increased over 500 cases nationwide. Every piece of information from the died, CDC and, and FDA linked every single case to THC cartridges. Zero cases have been linked to nicotine vaping agrees. products. I was dancing on Sunday with my granddaughter, and Tuesday I felt like I was on my deathbed. Benjamin Camarillo says he went to the hospital because he thought he had pneumonia. I felt like I couldn't breathe on my own. I felt like I had somebody sitting on my chest, maybe. When he arrived, Camarillo collapsed. Doctors ran a CAT scan that revealed his lungs were clogged. And I immediately knew what it was from. I knew it was from vaping. Camarillo says he This is where the fear mongering starts. And would use ben finished THC that sentence with THC cartridges. To help him through but the they day. left that part out. I told him I never vape. He only THC products. And I clearly told them that I got them from dispensaries. I wasn't buying them off the street somewhere. And they threw the vape industry under the bus for it. Yeah, and that's that. That's basically why we're here. Is is Ben has been told him he doesn't vape nicotine products. Uh, he doesn't vape flavored nicotine products. Never smoked cigarettes. He never even smoked cigarettes in his life. Uh, he uses THC products and was vaping a THC product that made him sick. How many products would come out? I would take a trip and go grab them and try to use them as, as you know, as discreetly as possible. Case These news media media outlets aren't aren't telling the truth. Uh, the CDC is not telling the truth, and the FDA is not telling the truth. Uh, this is like these have led the government to consider banning all flavored vaping products. This makes absolutely no sense. No evidence shows that flavored vaping nicotine products have been linked to any of these illnesses. Owner of 806 Vapes, Chris Goodwin, says they're blaming the wrong culprit. There's several products to vape. Uh, E-cigarettes are one way to vape. That's nicotine-containing product. You can also attempt to vape cannabis oil uh, out of a THC cartridge. Goodwin says the cannabis vapes include vitamin E acetate, used to thin out the oil enough to vape. He says this is what's causing the rare illness, not flavored nicotine. You figure at this point of the story, they would share the information from the CDC and the FDA, letting people know that the majority of these cases have been linked to THC and vitamin E acetate. Vitamin E acetate's a lipid. It's a fat. Okay. When you vaporize vitamin E acetate, it's, it's going to stick. And that's, that's a bad thing. Pulmonologist and intensivist Mark Singler says the city has had several cases that may be associated with nicotine vaping, but none has been confirmed. Fear mongering again, pushing that agenda. No cases have been confirmed anywhere in the world. Singler says it's hard to regulate what can and can't be vaped because officials aren't sure of what chemicals are in them. Actually, we know exactly what's in them because every reputable e-juice manufacturer in the United States has submitted product listings to the FDA. Sometimes they're related to THC, which is probably the most likely compound they're related to. Similar he to tells us here that they're linking these cases to THC products, but our gracious reporter from News Channel 7 is going to go right back into e-juice and nicotine vaping. Products. Singler says because the epidemic is changing every day, officials are still trying to find a set treatment that will work the best. Now I asked Dr. Sigler if he believes we you should better ask somebody aspects of vaping, and he says at this point the risk outweigh the benefits, and if you are vaping, you need to stop. For a public health official Center, to Lamaya make Harville, that ABC statement is very, very Thank dangerous to public health. Yeah, they kind of, kind of back into this both, and, and we we let them know when when they did the interview with us that hey, if we get back into it on this deal, we're gonna make sure the truth gets out there. A lot of you probably recognize Ben from this sign. Went as far as to have a mother from Fort Worth with a, a sick teenager ask Ben to make a sign that says, I want to start a no vaping campaign. <laughs> and, uh, and Ben's catching a lot of heat for that. And Ben's catching a lot of heat from you guys for a lot of things that he didn't do. Uh, we want you guys to know that, that Ben didn't go into the hospital saying, 
Ivate flavored nicotine products. Uh, ben didn't go into the hospital saying vaping made me sick. Uh, ben, ben hasn't done any of these things, so there's no reason that anybody in the vape indus vapor industry should be upset with Ben. Uh, ben is one of the very, very few people that have gotten sick and told the truth. Uh, ben is one of the very few people that have gotten sick and said, hey, I was using cannabis products, and, and everybody ignored it. And, and I have a feeling that they tried to pressure Ben's mind into thinking, you're sick from vaping, Ben. <laughs> and that, that's kind of what's happened here is, and it could be happening in more places than just here in Amarillo, and I'm sure it is. I, I'm sure that a lot of these people are getting feedback from medical professionals that they're supposed to trust uh, that vaping is making them sick. Uh, when we know damn good and well, vaping didn't make Ben sick. Uh, THC made, uh, taint, THC didn't make Ben sick either. Uh, a product that Ben used made Ben sick. Uh, that wasn't an e-liquid product, that wasn't a nicotine product. Uh, it's very, I think it's very vital that we get that out there because there are a lot of people just like Ben that have PTSD, uh, that have mental health problems, that have physical pain problems, uh, that have problems that require them to take a some sort of pharmaceutical if no other option is available. Uh, and that's not a good thing. And what's gonna happen here is, with the prohibition of vapor products, we're gonna end up in the same boat. You prohibit vapor products, you're gonna end up with the same thing that Ben's dealing with. You're gonna end up with people making stuff in their bathrooms, and you're gonna get bad products on the street that are gonna make people sick. And that's what we're trying to avoid here. Not only that, but we're trying to let you guys know, hey, this is a guy that stood up and, and told the truth. And this is a guy that's willing to stand up and help our industry. And he, I'm still trying, guys. I try to get in words. I try to get in some advocates for the vets, you know, for the Texas vets that kept getting discarded like they're not important. I still believe 100% in the marijuana industry in general. I believe people need access to that plant, especially the vets. And when I try to put a word out of that in the Channel 7 story, they didn't make one single mention of it. That was kind of wrong. I feel that was very wrong. And then they threw this guy's business under the bus. And I had, I wanted no part of that at all. But they, they don't tell you everything when they do these interviews with you. And we figured we'd get together and tell you the truth face to face. My words, his words. I did not attack the e-juice industry. I've never vaped it in my life. I do not even have a problem with it. I got my products from places where I thought were tested. I bought them from dispensaries and I brought them back, which made myself a criminal. I had to become a criminal to get the medicine I needed in Texas. And that was the risk I was willing to take. And whatever happened to me, happened to me. People think I bought carts off the street, but I bought, I bought all my products from dispensaries. I thought they were safe, but I never made beet juice at all. So I don't know why they chose to focus on that. As soon as they said I had PTSD, they went straight to showing the e-juice, like that was what caused my problems. Like from the second I went in, I told them I, all I vape is THC because of my PTSD. I do not vape anything else. And they went, they ran with the story the way they went, and it was totally wrong. They shouldn't have done it. Banning flavored vapor products in the United States is not going to solve this problem. This is not a flavored vapor product problem. This video was intended to show you that the media does not have your best interest at heart. The United States government does not have your best interest at heart. And the United States government is not working in the favor of public health.